All right, this video may be a little long, but I'm going to go over the farming of wandering traders. It can be the the 25 minute trader, which is going to be the most common, or the mysterious, the three hour one. The 25 minute is is the easier the 30 minute, like this one. Uh, I suggest as soon as it pops up, you go and do it. But this is why I'm going to show you the type of weapons you can get from these traders. This Kodak XL, you can pause and view the stats. Basically the best shotgun, the Spec Ops Vector SMG. This is hands down the best M SMG. Most of the guns you get are sighted already. Uh, this one comes with a suppressor. This one, sighted Scar H, doesn't come with a suppressor. I put that on there. The R12 import assault shotgun, which is pretty good. Uh, custom AK-47, which is awesome. You just got to put a suppressor on it. The MP5A2 Spec Ops. Now, this gun is awesome because it is a 9mm and it is sighted. One of the few in the game that I've found. And it's it's the best, I think. There's another uh, MP something custom. It's a smaller handheld. You can get a Spec Ops version of that. But all the Spec Ops ones seem to be held by... Um, the traders, they don't sell them, but they hold them. Those are the guns. Now, the, the, the melee weapons you will get, most of them will be bladed. But the ones you're going to get, uh, trench tool, which is bladed. I've only seen them carry one blunt one. It is a very good one, and I usually use it. And it is the breaching hammer, if I can find it here. But you get also this Bowie machete. Very good. Bladed weapon. Of course, go, this this happens every time, dude. Every, every time. Every time I'm trying to do a video, some stupid zombie. Yeah, breaching hammer is the, pretty much the only blunt they ever carry that I've seen. But it's an excellent blunt weapon if you use uh, blunt or striking. And the Ultralight Axe, which is, again, another awesome... These are all rare guns and weapons that you usually don't find on the map either. And that's about it that I've seen them carrying. There are a couple of things that you will always get. You always get a hiking pack, which is 8 pounds and 8 slots. And you always get a copy of one random encyclopedia, which can be sold. I'm trying to collect them all. I'm going to do a video on it if I can do it. But there seems to be 20. I'm like 5 away from having a complete set. Maybe that'll do something. Maybe it won't. If it does, I'll make a video on it. And that's what you get. Um, those four things. You get a gun, a melee weapon, and the gun and the melee weapon are always rare. And those ones that I showed, I haven't seen any others. And a, a book and the hiking pack. Now, the easiest way to take them out... Um, and it really depends on where they are uh, situated. This one seems to be in a shed, but you always want to take a car. And I always use someone with a marathon skill and light travel light. So I can round up zombies if needed and run without having to worry about getting tired and then tackling me. It just makes the pro And this is the perfect thing you want. You want to find a pharaoh. This is one of the best things, surprised I found it so easily, but this is one of the best things you can get to kill these traders. Is a feral, because a feral will go in a house. They can't hide from them like a juggernaut. Um, this one's in this uh, little shed right here. So I'm going to, the tricky part is to get the feral to focus on... The traitor and not you. So I'm going to wait for him to come in here. And I'm going to try to get out. If I can close the door even better. Then that usually makes it. And I'm going to hopefully let the feral just do its work. Then this happens. Where they get very lucky and they will one shot the feral. That's, it's rare but it happens. Let me see what gun he's using. Oh, He's using the MP5. And a trench shovel. I really want that gun. It's the Spec Ops version. So we're going to try this again. But you can see there, even the feral, the best way to kill them is with a bloater. If you can lead one to them in such a small area. But it, it's such, it's very hard to do. 
I, I can't believe he actually killed that feral that quickly. That usually, honestly, never happens. But you want to round up either a very large horde, and I'm talking about like, you know, 15 to 20 zombies. Because oh, hey. three or four, they're going to take care of easily because of the weapons that they have. Um, feral, like I said, is usually my favorite option to use. Um, they seem to have a lot of trouble with the ferals. A juggernaut is good also if they're in an open area. Open area would be um, not a house. <laughs> it would be like this shed. They like to they like to spawn in these type sheds. The juggernaut can go right in there and grab them, or any open area. The juggernauts work well. This he won't really work well for this situation because it's a shed and he will hide in there. But a horde of zombies will go in. And don't be afraid to drive up and down the map, go through the hills. It's important to keep honking the horn. That's what attracts usually the hordes of zombies. And the other thing about the traders that you gotta watch out for is they can, just like a regular hero, if they're not getting attacked enough when they fall down, they will get back up. And when they get back up, they're gonna spawn like most likely half their energy or half their health and then it's just it sucks you're gonna have to basically do the, the process all over again I'm gonna try and lead a horde in here just as an example so I have light and marathon skills so I can pretty much run forever which is what I suggest so so you can do this you can round up a horde you want to keep you want to go towards them away from them toward because they lose interest pretty easily so you want to go towards them away this may not even be enough because this is not a very large horde I usually like to bring like as I said you know like a bunch of zombies and then I will go in here I can't believe he went through and actually jumped on me but they should go in there you can see how good that gun is he is really dispatching these zombies with it that's why I think they have these hard, how high powered or high, um, all of them are automatic or burst fire. Like I said, they're very, they're very good guns to get. This is why you do this. It's just hard because you only have 20 minutes to do it, you know, 30 minutes to do it. And as you can see, he wiped out 10 very easily. I usually like to also, after they do that, go up to the trader and see how much health they have just to get a gauge because if they have like 10 health or something don't bring like one zombie or something make sure you bring a horde because one or two zombies will probably kill him but then he'll you know go into that mode where he can get back up and then he'll get back up if it's only two you have to have like like this like i'm trying to get a massive horde here it's hard to do. It's hard to do. That's why you have to have this marathon skill. Because they'll, with the car, they lose interest very easily. But this is a nice size of a horde. I just got to keep going around them and building them up. And You're going to usually get bitten a couple of times, but you just got to go through it. Or get hit. You may even get blood plague, but it's worth it for the for the, the gun and melee weapon you get, it's completely worth it. You just gotta keep gathering up a horde like this, keeping their focus on you. This is why the marathon skill I know I keep repeating this, but this is why it's so important because without it you'd be you'd be I'd run out of stamina, they'd be all over me. I usually don't like to lead a horde this far away because it's, it's just hard to keep them all together. I've done it before and this is, but you can see they're getting stuck on light poles and then they'll stop and scream and lose interest in that way too. It's just, a, it, it just can become a real pain. You just gotta constantly circle them like this, the circling motion, this fence is gonna deter them as well. They get stuck up 
that move, I don't even know what the hell that is. It's like they bump into you and your guy falls. It's like a stupid thing. All right, let's see how this horde does. Hopefully, hopefully, this horde goes after the actual... Another trick I'll do is I'll bump into this guy so he can't shoot. I'm t I want to just get out of there and let them get him. It's like some of them are not even going in. Some of them are still going out. It's like it's it's annoying when it's something like this because they're not that smart. And some of them are so stupid. They go outside and around the thing instead of inside it. So I round him up again. See, see he's hurt. He's probably going to get back up. And I think he just did because, like I said, there's just not enough on him. This is why you need, like, a feral something. I really don't like this shed here. Just because it's hard for the zombies to, to get their focus off you and go in the shed. He'll hide in the shed. It becomes a real pain. Maybe they'll get him. Maybe they'll get him. But you see, he's, he keeps getting up. He keeps getting up. It's like, I gotta, you got to get him out of the shed. This becomes really frustrating because of the weapon he's using. They don't attack him properly. They'll knock him down, and then they won't attack him. All right, maybe they'll get him now. Maybe. But you see, there's only one attacking him. They should be swarming him. Oh, they got him. They got him. But he's going to turn into a zombie, so you got to make sure to not let him get away. That's another thing. If he turns into a zombie, don't let him escape, or else all your hard work will be lost. Now I'm just going to clean up the zombies here. And of course there's a feral, now that I don't, I don't want him. I'm going to show you now why this is worth it. Let me try to get in here. Here he is. You're going to see the stuff you get. This feral is probably going to come in here, but I'm going to take this stuff anyway because I can't lose it. Yeah, you see? Here's the encyclopedia, the trench tool, and here we go. This MP5A2 Spec Ops I think is one of the best 9mm guns. Well worth it. The hiking pack, trench tool, and a book. And now you want to get out of there. Also, another reason to do this, too, is because all of the traders, at least in my game, and every playthrough now, they, they broke them. So they're all selling the stupid fireworks, which are fun to mess around with, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, I don't get the red talon thing. But yeah, here's a trench tool, not even damaged. The gun is damaged, I'll have to repair it, but this comes with a professional suppressor, which is another thing that's awesome. And there's the encyclopedia. So you always get that stuff from them. And these usually, I've not found any of these spec op weapons available for purchase. And even if you get the red talon, um, even if you get the red talon squad to sell you guns, it's still one in, a, you know, it's very random. This way, as you can see, is I like everyone in my community has a custom AK from them. Um, you can see sighted scars on all of them, on some of them. I got the Spec Op Vectors. This MP, the Spec Ops uh, MP5A2 is an excellent gun because 9mm bullets are very easy to come by, very easy to make, and, is, and it's sighted. It's such a good gun. I can't... It is one of my favorite guns, honestly. This gun is like... It has single, burst, and auto. It's decent zoom, which is what you want on a gun. And it's lightweight. It's only seven pounds. And I've never found the gun any other way. So those are the things you can get. That's how you farm the traders. Those, I'm trying to think if I'm leaving anything else out. Um, you saw the tactic I used there. You want a hero uh, or a survivor that has basically the marathon skill. You want to travel to that trader light so you can keep running 
without getting tired. This allows you to escape a feral if you have to, lead the feral to, to the trader, uh, or a juggernaut, um, and get away, you know, and, and, and to make, gather up a huge horde like I did. You have to have that. If you don't, you're you know you're never usually you're never gonna be able to do it. It's such a pain. But yeah, farming the traders is uh, a really good way to get the weapons for free because these weapons, though you can't even buy them, I'm assuming are gonna be you know three to five hundred influence each. Not to mention the melee weapons you can't buy. There's only one really good blunt weapon that they use, which is the breaching hammer which I really like, um, yeah, and that's it. Um, the best tactic is a bloater. If you can get a bloater to follow you, I'm gonna pause it here, but if you can get a bloater to follow you into the, that area, the bloater will kill him very quickly because they usually can't get out of the way the gas. If they're in a little shed like that, a juggernaut is not good. A feral would have been perfect, but he, you know, sometimes he gets lucky and headshots the feral like he did there. Um, that second feral I found would have killed him, definitely. But if not, you just need to gather up a decent amount of zombies, a decent horde like I did there, you know. Ten or more, bring them all in there, and then try to just lead them in there and get out of there. And let them do their work. And hopefully they knock them down and keep them down because that's the other problem. If they knock them down and they don't kill them... He'll get back up, and then he'll get half his health back, and it's just its just a real pain. You saw it happen to me. But don't... I've killed them with one minute left, so don't get discouraged if one or two hordes you bring here doesn't do it. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it until the time runs out. And as you um, get better at doing it, it's going to become pretty easier for you. The first couple of times, you probably may not be able to do it. You know, you may not get the weapons, and like I said, you have to do it before the timer for the trader runs out. If you do it after that, while he's running away, his body won't be lootable. This is the, a good way to get the best weapons and the best melee weapons for all of your survivors in even one playthrough. You can do this on a beginner playthrough or, you know, two or three playthroughs, whatever you can do. I mean, but again, marathon skill so you can hoard up zombies bring them in if they're in an open area a juggernaut will usually take them out if they're in a confined confined area like that i I'll, my feral is usually my number one the feral usually will kill them um because they have a hard time usually shooting him feral is my number one if that doesn't work the juggernaut uh, there's been some traders I've had to do, I'm not even joking, two juggernauts, two ferals before the guy was uh, killed. And there's some, I bring one horde of regular zombies in and it wipes them out. So it's, it's, some of it is luck, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to bring, you can't bring like three or four zombies in there because of the weapons they're using, they're going to kill them easily. You have to bring a massive horde in and then right into them. Basically, so you're in the line of fire too, but you, you have to do that because their weapons are usually so good, they can dispatch zombies. You saw how many he, he killed before he even got um, killed. They can dispatch them so easily because of the weapons they're using, but you're going to get these weapons and it's going to make your playthrough so much easier. You're not going to have to worry about spending influence on, any, on guns and melee weapons because you you do this four or five times or more, you're going to have all the guns and melee weapons you need. You're just going to have to repair them. That's about it. But other than that, you're going to have all the best stuff. Um, did I leave anything else out? I don't think so, but yeah. Farm the traders like this. This is the best way to get this best stuff from the traders. Forget buying stuff from them. Unless it's a Red Talon trader or the Network trader, those are the only ones that have good stuff. Um, but if it's these Merrymakers or the ones that sell the fireworks, just do this. I'm, I promise you, once you get good at it, it's going to become second nature to you and you're going to be getting reaping the benefits from these traders. Instead of wasting your influence on them you, and, and seeing them pop up on the map and be like, oh, he just has fireworks and just ignore them, you're going to be excited to see a trader now. You're going to be like, oh... 
There's a traitor. That means I'm going to get a spec op weapon. That means I'm going to get, you know, a, a, a breaching hammer or a trench tool. I'm going to get a, a sighted scar. I'm going to get a custom AK. You're going to be excited to see what they're carrying because that's what you're going to get. So it, 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 I think it adds a, another dynamic to the traders where it makes it for me whenever I see them now I drop everything I'm doing and I go right to the trader whereas before I used to completely ignore them once they were starting to sell the fireworks I didn't even go buy them anymore but now that I know how to do this it's the best thing ever when I see them I go right to them so hopefully you guys do the same. This, I know this is a long video, but I'm, I just want to try to you know, explain how good this is. And if you get good at it, you, it's, you're just going to reap the benefits. It's just going to be, you know, you're going to be wanting these traders to come up so you can do this stuff. Um, and as you can see, as I'm talking about it, I, I love them. I love them at this point. I used to hate them. I love them now. Um, but that's it.